Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now today's video will take a look at the Radio Oddity DB40, which is a dual band 40 watt DMR on FM mobile radio transceiver. Now I remember when DMR was first starting to get popular within the ham radio community, and back then we had nothing like this. The closest we had was the Motorola radios, which were designed really for the business market. Now fast forward a few years and we're now seeing manufacturers design and build DMR radios with the ham radio market in mind. Now the DB40 has been around a little while and this is the first chance I've had to take it out of the box and give it a test. Now surprisingly we do get quite a few accessories in the box, including a programming cable which is highly needed with a radio like this. Now the included mic does have a little plasticky feel to it but it does offer great modulation and provides access to the radio's features without having to touch that radio itself. The DB40 supports Bluetooth for both audio and PTT, and using the included PTT remote, you can key the radio without even having to touch the microphone. Now, as you would expect, a mobile bracket is supplied, so vehicle mounting is not a problem, but you also get these two little antennas. Now one of these is for GPS and the other is for Bluetooth. Both of these fit on the rear of the radio. Now incidentally, the GPS port on this radio can also accept an active GPS antenna, which does actually provide better performance. The included power cable comes in the form of a vehicle accessory plug, meaning getting power to the radio should be easy enough in most vehicles. As I mentioned earlier, you get a Bluetooth PTT, so to accompany this, you also get a Bluetooth headset, which you can use to listen and talk through the DB40 using Bluetooth. Again, never having to touch the microphone of the radio. Now the included manual is pretty good, all in English and very easy to understand. Now it does appear that users manuals these days seem to be getting better with the more recent radios. Now taking the DB40 out of its box and protective wrapping, we're presented with a rather sleek front-facing panel. Now the screen is 2.4 inch color, and in my opinion, it's one of the best screens that I've seen on a radio. Now more about this in a moment when we power it on. Now on the rear, we find the cooling fan, an SO239 socket for the antenna. Now personally, I would have preferred an N-type. We can now see the two SMA sockets on the right, which was for the GPS antenna and the Bluetooth antenna, which I showed you a moment ago, along with a 3.5 millimeter audio output socket, which has a rather interesting logo of a pair of headphones, but I guess plugging in your extension speaker would be best. And this is how the GPS and Bluetooth antennas attach to the back of the radio. So just bear that in mind if you're planning on installing this into a vehicle. You can use an active GPS antenna instead, which I mentioned earlier, and that will provide better reception as you'll be able to mount the GPS antenna outside. Now you could use something like this. The microphone or programming cable plugs into the left side RJ45 port. You cannot use both at the same time though, so just bear that in mind. Powering on the DB40, you're presented with the startup logo and then quickly onto the main screen, which shows two VFOs. And the top left rotary encoder changes the memory channel within the selected zone, and the two rotary encoders on the right adjust the volume for each VFO. So yep, you can listen to two channels at the same time. Now the PF buttons can be programmed within the software to perform whichever function you like. For example, you could assign power level to PF1, and then PF2 could quickly access the zone list. You also notice the internal radio speaker is located on the top of this radio. Now I mentioned earlier that the screen is quite good, but it's kind of difficult to capture with the glare from the lights in here. So here's a couple of photos which should kind of show how good the screen is. Now, like I said, it's way better in real life. Now, if you have a DB40, let me know what you think about the screen in the comments below. Now, before we look at the menus and connect this radio up to an antenna, let me just briefly talk about the specs. Now, the DB40 has built-in APRS. Now, that's for digital DMR APRS, where it sends your location over the DMR network. And it also has regular FM APRS, meaning you can beacon your location to the normal APRS network, or at least to any eye gates in your area. 
Now it supports DMR tier one and tier two, which is kind of required for ham radio use, especially tier two when it comes to repeaters. You can also store up to 4,000 zones and channels, and that's alongside the massive 500,000 DMR ID contacts. Now ID contacts are downloaded to the radio using software, which I'll show you in a moment. But what these IDs provide is information on screen when you are receiving a station. Now every DMR radio sends a DMR ID with its transmission. And if you have the contact database installed, then your radio will show details of the person that's talking by cross-referencing their transmitted DMR ID with a DMR ID in the contacts database. Talker alias is also supported alongside crossband repeat. Now apparently this radio also supports same frequency repeat, meaning that when enabled and DMR is set, time slots one and two are linked. So if one person talks on time slot one, then that's rebroadcast onto time slot two. Now I think I'll test this feature in the future as it does actually sound quite interesting. I just need to find someone else to test it with locally. Now pairing the Bluetooth accessories is fairly easy. Just ensure that you've charged your PTT and headset before doing so. Within the menu, just locate the Bluetooth section and perform a scan. Now the DB40 will connect to those devices quite easily, as long as they're nearby. When scanning for the headset, you'll notice that it's detected as an ME100. So just so you know which device to connect to. Now, unfortunately, using this radio straight out of the box is pretty impossible especially if you want to use DMR. So we need to use some programming software on your computer. Now there is an official CPS by Radio Oddity for the DB40, but I would not waste your time with it as it's kind of full of bugs. Now the best software to use is called Code Plug Editor, which is written by David MM7DBT. Now it's extremely easy to use and it's laid out in tab format. So you just kind of work your way through the tabs from left to right. Now this allows you to set up talk groups, receive groups, zones and channels. There's also a contacts list generator which downloads the latest DMR ID database from the internet. It also allows you to choose which countries you want to include in the database. Now at the time of making this video, I think there was around 250,000 contacts in the database. And with the 500,000 storage space on the DB40, you could actually download the entire database. But be warned, downloading the database from the software to your radio can take around 30 minutes or more. Now, another useful feature of the CodePlug Editor software is that it features a link to Repeater Book. By entering your location, either in Lat Long or Locator, you can choose to download all the details for nearby repeaters with a set distance. Now this saves a lot of time when it comes to programming the radio with repeaters. Of course, you still need to configure talk groups and channels for DMR usage to make sure you're listening and transmitting on the correct talk group and time slot. Now one last thing to talk about is the spurious emissions. In the past, I've performed my own test and showed them in the video. Well, this radio has been approved by the FCC, which means all the test reports and results are publicly available online. Now I'll link below where you can view this information, but to me, it looks like this radio passed on every test. So one last thing to show you or to let you hear is how the DB40 sounds on DMR. Well, you're in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, just using a handheld from a repeater. If you're in the morning, it's uh, 6 a.m. It's uh, warmer temperatures. So I'm here just here with a t-shirt with the window down back to you. kc 7 at Ocean Hotel. This is uh, M0 DQW Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio on the Radio Oddity DB40. Radio Oddity DB40 testing audio 12345 over. This is uh, M0 DQW Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio on the Radio Oddity DB40. Radio Oddity DB40 testing audio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, what are my final thoughts on the Radio Oddity DB40? Well, it's an amazing DMR radio for sure. It has all the features that you could want from a mobile DMR radio that's been designed for the ham radio market. 
But after using the radio for a week or so, there is just one thing that kind of niggles me, and that's the volume control. Now, the volume control for each VFO appears to be digitally controlled from those two encoders on the right, but they just don't seem to have fine enough steps to adjust the volume to a comfortable level, especially when using at home. Now, for me, it's not really a problem as I run the audio output through an analog mixer, and it may not be a problem if you're driving, as you would want that volume loud enough to cover the road noise anyhow. I guess I just like the feel and response of proper analog audio controls. Maybe it's not a problem for anybody else. But if you guys have got this radio and you have some niggles, let us know down in the comments below. I'd love to know what your negative thoughts are on this radio. On the other hand, if you own this radio and like its features, let me know down in the comments below as well which features you really like. Until the next video, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.